Hey, good uh, afternoon, everyone. Jacob Dickey here in the Weather Center. Just wanted to give you a quick status update with where things are. We didn't really have any Facebook Lives ahead of this event, and some of that is because things kind of escalated a little bit quicker here towards the end. So uh, if you want to, um, if you want to perhaps let me know in the comments where you're watching from. If you have any questions, things like that, I uh, would appreciate that here as we just do a quick update. Maybe 10 minutes is all we'll do before things get a little bit more active here, uh, perhaps later on this afternoon. Currently, we do have a tornado watch for counties that are in yellow here in our area. The storms have not reached that yet, and they're struggling a little bit here early. But we anticipate that in the next hour or two, they'll start to see things intensify a little bit more for us in the board. And so that is something that we are keeping an eye on here. Let me give you that watch uh, outline here just so we can take a peek at it and uh, show you which counties are in and which counties are out here. Uh, pretty much all of us are here in this, um, except for McCoupin, Morgan, and Cass counties. Those three counties really think the storms are going to pass by. They're some moving through now. But it seems like things will start to ramp up after it passes by for them. Uh, the rest of us have this tornado watch in place until 9 o'clock tonight. Uh, you can see here that tornado watch is for Springfield, Decatur, Champaign. Uh, it's over towards Danville, down to Matson, Charleston, Effingham. It does carry up into the southern Chicago metro, including Will County. Kind of stops along I-80 here. Uh, and then fills everywhere south uh, in that yellow. It goes down into parts of south-central Illinois here in our area. So uh, we will keep an eye on that very closely here for that. Uh, we do have an enhanced risk for severe weather. You can see here this area in orange is a good chunk of our area. And uh, let me pull up the other little closer look here for you so we can peek at that. Um, that enhanced risk, a three out of five. Now, we were at a... Um, when it came to last Friday, we were at a four out of five. That four out of five was wind driven here. That risk was wind driven. Uh, the tornado risk last Friday was actually would have been equivalent to the three out of five. Uh, we had it at a six out of 10. Just some simple math there. This orange area, those where that best chance for a couple of tornadoes will be. Gonna have to watch the wind and hail threat a little bit more here, kind of looking at some things. If we get these more isolated storms, there may be just enough energy to kind of help some of those trend up a little bit here. Of course, though, the enhanced risk itself is mainly driven with the tornado risk today. It's at a 6 out of 10. We've opted to not increase it. We're going to keep it there. But at this point, the forecast is on target, and I think we're primarily just going to be looking at uh, some individual cells that may be rotating, and that can give you the tornado risk. We're at a 6. I want to say this. A 6 out of 10, while yes, is a little higher than a normal severe weather event here, a lot of us aren't going to be affected by tornadoes. Remember, tornadoes are typically small, but we still can get a number of them here. We had 10 of them in our WCIA3 viewing area last Friday with the 6 out of 10. We've had 6 out of 10s where we've had none. We've had 6 out of 10s just like last Friday where we've had 10. It's a relative risk here. Kind of gives you an idea of what the atmosphere is like. And we think that is leaning towards maybe some more tornado activity in our area. The best chance for that, of course, in that orange, Springfield. Effingham points to the north and east is where that risk is at this point. Uh, and then that four continues all the way into Indiana. It also does include technically Springfield, Effingham. But I think our tornado watch is the uh, main player for that here. This is the damaging wind risk. We're only at yellow here. It's lower. We could see some wind gusts, I think, potentially up to 60, 65 miles an hour. I wouldn't rule that out. Um, and that is the wrong one here. Let me get the correct one up real fast. Um, the correct graphic for that. This is that 55, 60 mile an hour. It's not going to be a widespread wind event here. These storms are looking more scattered and, um, that is kind of what we're expecting with this. So, um, you know, we're not talking potential for 75 mile an hour wind gust. We don't think it's more widespread. I tend to think those gusts are more isolated to scattered. It just depends on where our individual cells go here. The hail threat. I was a, probably a little bit uh, low on my initial thoughts on this, kind of looking at some things, kind of like, eh, maybe we will deal with some hail out there in the next few hours. Going to go with some uh, golf ball size hail. And um, that is a possibility with this as a, for the areas in orange there. Some of those storms may just be a little more intense, a little more robust, and you can sometimes get that. It would be hard to get anything larger than golf balls there. And golf balls might be a stretch. We might be just less than that. But quarter to golf ball, I think, is a good range to look at for uh, the maximum possible hail. And to clarify also, not everyone gets golf ball size hail. The risk is there, though, in orange for those areas to have that. You have to get one of these storms to come through your town, to come through your area, in order to see that severe weather risk materialize. There will be a number of us where, oh, nothing happened in my town. 
The next town over, though, might have some problems from Storm Surge. So that is something to consider. Uh, this is not a line coming through hitting everybody or getting everybody storm activity. Rather, it's going to be some more scattered storm activity that we deal with out of this as it moves on through. So relative here, the severe weather impacts tornadoes is the greatest threat out of this. We kind of have an environment where there's some wind shear and potential instability that's developing. That tends to favor more of these tornadoes. Most tornadoes probably on the weaker side. However, given some of that wind shear, uh, there could be a stronger tornado. I cannot rule that out. Uh, and so that is something that we'll just keep an eye on here. Let's walk through it. See what Future Track does here. First off, doing a decent job. It's picked up some of the cloud cover here. I think that green is actually that thick dust that's been showing up. But we've had a number of reports of that, a number of photos. Uh, and that dust originates from Oklahoma. Texas and New Mexico, big winds down there swept that up and it sent it our way here. And so that's something that we're watching. Doing a good job picking up on some of these storms initially here. I think there'll be kind of a northern corridor north of I-72 as we get to 2, 3, 4 o'clock. But we do have to watch south as well here. See, they're kind of little individual kidney bean shapes. That's kind of uh, picking up on the idea that uh, maybe those storms do rotate a little bit. Here's 5, 6 o'clock, couple of strong to severe storms in the area. I don't think everyone has a severe storm, but we could see three or four problematic storms at any point through the day. And that's something that we'll keep an eye on. And then notice by seven o'clock, those storms are out of here. They do line out a little bit more, which maybe means the wind threat picks up to our east because they're more isolated. That tornado threat's a little higher here locally, which is something that we're watching and uh, keeping a close eye on here. If you've been following my Facebook page, you know we've been watching for two things out of this. One, temperatures. Springfield's up to 71 now. It's 66 in Decatur, 64 here in Champaign. You got to get those mid to upper 60s. We're doing that. That's not being an issue here. The other thing is those dew point values. They're in those uh, low creeping on mid 50s here. If we want that tornado threat to, to materialize a little bit more, and obviously we don't, but what we're looking for here is if those dew points start to read more 56, 57, 58, that only helps that tornado threat. So we don't need those dew points in the 70s. We don't need soupy, muggy air uh, to have that tornado threat uh, be an issue for us here. And so that is something that we'll be watching pretty closely here. A couple of housekeeping notes, and then we'll take a look. A lot of you have been saying, man, that dust is out there and is really rough. Seth just walked in. Kevin's in the field. Uh, um, we're going to first off remind you of weather call. And if you're on the chat now, we had a lot of folks that signed up for this. And... Um, Weather call is where we call you if there's a severe thunderstorm or a tornado warning for your area. $15 a year, a small fee, pennies a day, uh, but that's a service where for some folks, maybe a phone call is better than a push alert on the app. Our app is free, and uh, we, we, uh, we send those push alerts for free out through our WCI3 weather app. You may have some relatives who are a little older, you know, your parents or grandparents, and perhaps uh, maybe they are, um, you know, not quite in the cell phone, not quite in the thing. Um, the weather call might be an option for them. You can sign them up and you can manage the account and they'll get a call from us if they are under a tornado warning. This works by being address specific. You put in your home address. And I tell you what, if this is your house and the tornado warning is here over, you're barely in it, you get a call. If your house is out of the tornado warning polygon, but across the street is, you don't get a call. It is so specific, so exact. There's no question whether you are in a tornado warning or not. If you get that weather call, you can sign up on our website. Uh, it's also great. Maybe you got college students, right? That could be something that you want to uh, uh, think about. If you've got relatives, you can buy this for your relatives in Colorado if you want, uh, New Mexico, wherever, Maine. I mean, we'll call them if there's ever a warning for their location. Of course, we mean this for our viewers. Seth, how long till Christmas? Huh. Nine months? Yes. I mean, it might make a great Christmas gift for someone as well. Uh, $15 a year is it. And you get that weather information, which is a great way to stay connected. Let me show you more what that looks like here. Um, I got another graphic to kind of illustrate things. First off, here's that polygon. If that's your home, you're inside that tornado warning polygon, you get a call, right? All these homes are getting called. We're just, we're just doing digital stream. We're not on TV. Michael, Michael, our uh, audio guy came and looking at me like I was crazy here. We're just doing a little pre-coverage, kind of informing some folks. Notice they're getting phone calls here. Folks that are outside are not getting phone calls. And so a very specific thing. Our news app has the link to that. Um, you can download that for, um, uh, or you can log on to the news app. You can go to our website and get that. You do have to get onto the internet and sign up for it. But I think it's a great resource that we've been able to uh, have for our area. Other ways you can get alerts, of course, we'll be on TV if warranted. Our weather app 
We'll send you a location. If you're traveling, you're like, hey, I'm at work now. I got to go home. Set that to follow my location, your location services on there, and we'll follow you. And when you're driving on the interstate between Champaign and Mattoon, if there's a tornado warning there, stations, we've been talking with the Illini Radio Group. Uh, we may go on them, potentially, if there's some severe weather. That's an, a possibility. Uh, so if you're driving, maybe check out Mix 94.5 or Wixi or Wixi Classics. And uh, those are places you can listen in your car. Uh, NOAA Weather Radio makes a great tool as well. Of course, weather call and then wireless emergency alerts. Don't count on outdoor warning sirens. They're meant for outdoor folks. We've had a lot of folks saying, I didn't hear the sirens Friday night. Well, there was so much wind and those storms were so wet and rainy. You might hear them when they test them on a clear day, but on a windy, stormy day, you can't count on that. Uh, and so that's something to know. And then while Facebook and Twitter do not make great ways to stay up to date in the moment, you can turn there to catch our digital stream as well. So that is something that I wanted to share. And then the last thing here is uh, we'll give you the app. The app is a great resource. I'll put that link up as well. You can download our app for free follows your locations. You can stream severe weather coverage, get information like that all on our app. And it makes a great resource as well. We encourage you to have more than one way, at least two ways to get weather information. Some of you, it's the app and it might be a no weather radio. Some of you might choose weather call in a no weather radio. I don't want to mess with those cell phones. Some of you, it might be, hey, I'm watching TV and I've got my wireless emergency alerts activated on the phone. Those all are potential opportunities for that here. I got a news meeting in about five minutes. Uh, I would love to answer some questions, but I will say this. Um, the dust is the last thing I want to check real quick here uh, before I forget. Let me pull up my camera real fast. And then we're going to take a look and see where Kevin is at um, and uh, check that out. So let me see here if I can pull that camera up. Um, there's Pontiac. Notice how gray and I mean, it looks kind of hazy and gross out there. Um, that is a, a bit of a mess with that dust up there. That dust originate from dust in New Mexico and in Oklahoma and Texas has been swept into the atmosphere. We haven't seen the air quality be lower for much here at the surface, but it's up there. You can see it. Uh, and that is the view in Pontiac. Why don't we just take a peek here at, um, Take a peek at, uh, just seeing Kevin text me. I'll pull up his camera in a second here. We're going to take a look in uh, Danville, see what it looks like there. And I, I'm seeing Seth on my screen, too. He's setting up the chroma key back there. Uh, Danville will be popping up in a second, I think. And uh, we'll see if it looks hazy there. Kind of got that gray, mottled brown-looking sky. How about Gibson City? We'll jump to Champaign, and then we'll work our way west here in a second. Uh, Gibson City, that haze is definitely there. Here in Champaign, we noticed it. Kevin and I stepped outside, and we were kind of like, man, that's a little yucky uh, coming on through. Definitely looks ominous. Um, but then we get to the west here, and that's Springfield. There's some blue sky there, and you can actually see some of those towering cumulus clouds trying to grow into thunderstorms, which is what we'll have to watch. And uh, that's the case. And then I also want to, real quick, before we go bring Kevin up, I know he's just driving through Decatur, right? Oh, it looks like Kevin's TV went down, so we don't have him. Um, at one point he was up, but he's probably resetting things and whatnot. So uh, Kevin might be listening. Sometimes he just listens into the microphone. You might hear that, uh, but uh, we'll check in with him and have any updates that are needed. All right, folks, let's do one last radar update here, and then we're going to get off and go to our news meeting. Uh, we're going to be watching these storms here in western Illinois, west of Springfield still. Got some time to get them off to the east. This isn't even in the tornado watch, right? I think as these storms move east, they enter a more favorable area, and then we'll be keeping an eye on some of those. See how they're more individual shaped, kind of isolated? That's something that definitely has to be watched and something that we'll keep an eye on uh, as we move on through. For a lot of us here across the area, things are dry. It is hazy. It's uh, a bit uh, uh, yucky, but uh, we haven't had any storm activity yet. That tornado watch does go until 9 o'clock. That's my update for you. Get more details online, and as well as you can also uh, get any information with a weather call online, our weather app, download that for your Android and Apple devices. And uh, I hope we don't have to see you, but if so, Seth, Adam, Kevin, and myself will all be uh, around uh, helping to keep you updated with the storms as they move on through for our potential severe weather risk this afternoon. I'm Jacob Dickey.